It's 6 o'clock, and this is the March 19th Laverne Parks and Rec Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, we have a proper quorum, and uh, we'll take a second to look over the minutes and someone to approve or disapprove. Make a motion to approve the minutes. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we'll move on to the council report. Jeff? Um, I don't know where you want to start. We got old business, we got the new business, we got, uh, we're in the middle of budget uh, talks right now, um, capital, and uh, capital has been the last two weeks, then we'll have our first general fund budget meeting this Thursday. Um, we got some pretty high dollar, high dollar items out there, not necessarily for us, but well, I guess so for us because PD is in need of the uh, computer-aided dispatch system. That'll take a big chunk of money this year. And we're hoping that we'll get approval to get the matching funds for the Greenway. So that's the big thing that's got to do with Parks and Recreation. Um, so those are our capital projects that we're working on. Um, most everything else we got going on is, is contained within the, the old business and new business. Very good. All right, we'll move on to old business. And we'll talk about two Saturdays ago, we had our hurricane-free cleanup. Um, I think pretty much everyone in the room was, was in attendance and uh, a pretty good number. I went to 80 to 100, something like that. Um, really nice day. And uh, uh, I, I think the last number was 250 bags of, of trash that we pulled out of there. Uh, I, I think if we went there next Saturday, we probably could do the same. There was that much, but, but I think uh, we put a dent into it and hopefully we'll do it again soon. But well, that, in addition to there was an employee cleanup on Wednesday of that week down in the area, um, which will be right there at East Near Streetman at the Creek, uh, down to um, vicinity of, I think it's just past Madison Square um, in the Creek bit down there. But anyway, they've got a, a dump truck full of, of stuff out of there too, a lot of tires and and big ticket items like that. So it was really, it's a, you know, it's a good day. We got a dumpster full of stuff and we could probably go out there, like you said, every day for the next 30 days and, and you know, make a dent. But it's a starting point and, um, you know, positive steps. Anyone? <coughs> you didn't say anything? Well, I, you know, I, it's a shame that we have to, I know a lot of that's washed ashore from the lake, but all that stuff down there, it's hard to believe that it's accumulated like it does. Sure. We've gone down there every year that I've been involved. Uh, normally in the latter part of the year, October, a little bit colder, so this was a good uh, time to go down. It was nice weather and we accomplished something. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, Katie kind of touched on that, um, talking about every city that's on the lake kind of is, is fighting that mm -hmm. problem with it, you know, uh, trash just rolling up out of the shore and, and so on but again I think people could take a, a little more concerted effort and sure care can, of it yeah. there and we need to you know, absolutely so. I did see the media too so they supported the event as well and definitely got the word out so hopefully you know that sure will help in the future for yeah. folks to keep their trash either collected or bagged or as they're voting on the lake and things and I'll say this um it seems like more and more that we ask for volunteers or, or, or organizations to help out. Um, they're, they're coming out, and, and I think this, year, this time it was helping out Jeff. It was the soccer team from Laverne Middle, and uh, uh, I know the concerned citizens were there, and, and just uh, probably bits and pieces of everything. It's a really good cross section of the community. Um, so we really do appreciate that. So anything else on uh, the cleanup? Uh, okay, we'll move on to our current. Greenway and sidewalk projects. Jeff, if you wouldn't mind just kind of giving us a quick overview of I what's will. happening. Uh, current Greenway projects, the state, um, we had submitted our, our preliminary plans for the Greenway, the next phase, Hurricane Creek 2, from the library back to the roundabout. And uh, our initial submission had some some red flags, if you will. For one, the, the document that they had said that they were talking about 3,000 feet of Greenway, when in fact we're talking closer to 7,000 feet of Greenway. So the numbers didn't really marry up when we said we were looking for 3,000, but the number, the dollars were, were talking seven. So we made some changes there, um, talked about some improvements to be made along the Greenway as far as trailheads, um, benches, lighting, things of that nature, um, just to, to get that to the state, to make sure we're all on the same piece. So we're waiting on them. 
um, to give us a notice to proceed. We'll do preliminary, preliminary engineering will be next, then right of way and, and environmental. Um, so realistically, we could be looking at construction in 18 to 24 months. I think that's probably realistic. Anything short of that would be um, just lucky on our side and, and anything other side would be unlucky. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the sidewalk projects, little snag on uh, on Fergus Road. Um, put the bid out, got the bids back, and Sessions. It was our recommendation to the state that Sessions Paving receive um, the bid. As it turns out, through a uh, typo, technical glitch, or whatever you want to call it, they were listed as the pre-approved as Sessions Paving LLC, I believe and their bid came back sessions paving INC and the difference at the at the state level was enough that it disqualified them from being the low bid and they went with the next highest bid which I believe was civil engineering. Um, we don't have to rebid it. Um, we probably lost six weeks in the process waiting on the decision to come back but um, this is a summer project to start after school has started and hopefully um, I think the target date is still September of this year shortly after school gets back in session, but that'll be the Fergus Road sidewalks that we're looking at. You don't mind me going back. Um, Brookside, you've done a little little extra stuff, uh, kind of, uh, I guess, you had some garbage uh, cans and, and, and so on that you put out there to kind we of did, uh, finish that off. I believe it was two meetings ago, Citizens Comments, um, one of the people that lives right there on the Greenway had commented about some improvements they'd like to see made there. We had. Um, you know, there was the big rush to get the greenway done before the end of the year. We didn't really have an opportunity to, to do anything more than get the, the skeleton of the, the greenway in. But we've gone back, um, put some signage up at both entrances. Uh, we've got a, a dog a pet station, whatever you want to call one of those things, that to assist people in cleaning up after their pets. Um, we put a bollard out there right off of, of uh, the one entrance was at Stones Ridge. Um, to keep vehicular traffic from going back up in there. Um, we still intend on putting a fence around the parking area that's over there on Blakemore, um, just waiting for uh, basically a, an opportunity. The grass is growing now and we're cutting, so we're trying to keep up. So it is on our short-term plan, our short-range plan, to get a fence up there. Um, and then we'll be out there a couple times a week cutting, it looks like. And the other two sidewalk projects uh, pretty much are going to probably take off about the same time that we Pretty thought they would. Pretty much waiting on a start date of, of right after a Memorial Day when the kids get out of school. So Okay. And again, that's the Cheney Project, um, which will run from the high school basically down to Old Nashville Highway. Correct. And the Safe Routes to, uh, to School Project, which will go from basically Roy Waldron or Sand Hill Road and complete the sidewalks all the way to uh, Anna Gannon. I'm sorry. It would, it, our piece would stop at Anna Gannon. And then there's already existing sidewalks from there then to the rest of the way to the school. So that would basically complete the, the project or complete the sidewalks all the way from Roy Waldron to Laverne Middle. So the kids would be Correct. Uh, out of the street. Right. And, We're and, starting to piece all these, you know, tie all these pieces together. So. And the, and the completed date right now, the projected date is somewhere around September of this year. Correct. Right? All three of these projects will be going on at the same time with the, deal. With the anticipated completion date of mid-September. <clears throat> Anything from the board? Good job. Okay. We'll move on to some of the new business and some of the fun items. Um, we begin our preliminary talks for um, our second annual July 4th picnic in the park. Um, I think we may keep some of the, the old format and, and add, right. to, add to it. And uh, again, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, I mean, I've got some thoughts open to, to you know, board you know, input. Um, it is the second annual one. Last year's was great. I understand last year a lot of the food was donated. Um, what we, and I, don't, I anticipate our numbers this year to be substantially greater than what they were last year, possibly twice as many, three times as many people. Um, what I'd like to entertain is us going out and getting vendors to come in and set up and maybe get three or four, maybe even five different food vendors. We could get local businesses or we could get um, you know, uh, youth groups, Laverne Baseball Softball Association may want to set up a booth or, or something like that and then maybe have a barbecue station, a hamburger station, a hot dog station and let patrons go and they can purchase from the groups. So it's like, it could be a fundraiser for the organizations. 
Um, I really don't think we're in a position to, to give away that much free food this year. Uh, if we can, that would be great. If there's a sponsor out there that would come and do that, we would do that. Um, but I just think that that would be a, a good way for us to get community buy-in, if you will, to that. Uh, the bid is out for the fireworks right now. I think the opening date for that will be the end of this month. We'll probably not bring that before the board until May. So I think the bid opening was between the workshop and the actual Mayor Alderman meeting. So just to keep in good practice, we'll wait and, and push that off. Looking at musical entertainment this year, um, much like last year, and also thought about maybe doing a cruise in. Um, that's a low cost, no cost deal to us. Um, we could get maybe a 50s band for the entertainment and just kind of have a nostalgic um, tie in, maybe a throwback, if you will, because our old timers festival is Remember When, kind of a look back at Laverne's history. So just kind of tying, you know, all these programs in together. I just, you know, I'm open to suggestions. I'm, kin I'm, a, I'm a big fan of not repeating exactly. I mean, good things we can move forward, but let's not do the same thing over and over because it gets kind of stale. Um, but again, I'm open to anything that the board has to recommend. A's, nays. My thing is, since it's an American theme, um, what about like a Corvette Car Club or something? You know, just something sure. fun to have, something that's American just to tie in. I'm good with um, that. I mean, there's all kinds of car clubs in and around the area. So. And I think the Rotary uh, Club actually sponsors one and I'm you know, maybe somebody to check, check with them to see if they want to okay. maybe tie in with it. That's there are several clubs, and sure. even the Harley Owners Group. I got, I mean, it's as about as American as it gets. Yeah. And get them to stroll in. And yeah, I am maybe, too. Maybe both, you know. Sure. Sure. And uh, we're talking, um, I guess we'll have to wait and see when the bid comes out to see who's awarded the fireworks uh, contract. But I'm looking at the feasibility of shooting the fireworks from the top of the hill where the park's property is and that way we could again have to see where the safety zone lays out but we could set up where people could could set up to watch the fireworks from the football field as it stands right now when we do the safety zone we have to cordon off from pavilion a through the little league and really around the back side of that hill and um, it, it's still a good show if you're on the property but if you were there with them you know going off right over your head i think that would be pretty cool and then two, it would lend itself to possibly football, selling all the concession stand, you know, however we want to do it. So I just think there's a lot of options there. Um, again, open to any suggestions. I think too, you said two or three times the number. I think the numbers last year that were kind of estimated were the city actually fed 850 uh, people and then by the end of the night with the fireworks, there were roughly 3,000 in there. So just by opening up that rear part of the park, it may be we may have to just to just to fit everyone sure. in. So, um, and again, I love the idea um, of of trying to get some vendors in and, and, and groups to again to, to come in and just kind of partner with the city and so on. Um, but I also want to take this time to throw out there again. We talked about it last year, um, but we were kind of rushed as far as trying to get volunteers. But um, at the end of this uh, um, uh, meeting, there well. Uh, Jeff, if you don't mind, I, I volunteered your number and my number as well to be put on the bottom of the of the screen. If there's any groups that want to get together and, and again help out, whether it be uh, Patriotic Picnic or uh, the Christmas Parade or the Old Timers Festival, please call us. And, and, and um, it really is a big undertaking. So the more we can get taken care of now, um, the better. So apologize, I should have told you that ahead no, of time. But, but uh, anything else, guys? Mm -hmm. So with this event, if we do get clubs that sell their the hot dogs and the hamburgers and the things, do they have to get any type of a health department certificate or anything like that? For a one-day event, it is my understanding, no, they do not. Okay, good. The, the problem we ran into with Old Timers Festival, because it was a three-day event in the festival and not a one-day event, they were required to go out and get their state certificates. But to my, best of my understanding, and I'll follow up on it, yeah. best of my understanding, a one-shot deal is you know, free and clear. That's a good question. Anything else? All right, we'll move on to basically the next uh, fun event, which, was, which will come up in about, uh, about five, six months already, um, 2012 Old Timers Festival. So. You had your first meeting, I believe, last month. And we did. I'm on just a logistics meeting with the 
police department, some key players in, from the city side, um, just to talk, get an idea of what we want to do. A um, little modification to the parade route for certain. Um, thoughts on, on layout last year, the, the yellow tent, the community tent was a big hit, um, but it didn't get the marketing that it needed. People didn't know where it was or didn't know what was going on back there. So we threw out some ideas of, of moving that or possibly having a community tent for, for events like the Roy Walder and Choir or the Laverne Coraliers and, and having a main stage for, for primary entertainment like the Wanna Beatles or things like that. Because we did run into a problem where a group was trying to set up while another group was trying to tear down. There was a lot of dead time in there. So maybe if we could have two stages at opposite ends of the park doing different things. Um, and it was brought up too, could we not put a stage out on the football field and using that same mentality that we're using for Independence Day, set a stage up over there, vicinity of the football press box, and then people could just lay out their blankets and, and listen to the band and not be, you know, and just be able to enjoy that atmosphere if you're not a carnival atmosphere person or an arts and craft, at, you know, so trying to balance it out. Um, believe it or not, we've got all the paperwork for the applications, we're getting food vendors um, applying, we're getting craft vendors, words getting out there. Um, people are trying to set up their schedules for the summer to see where they're gonna go. And uh, we're on the map, good yeah. good work. I was blessed last year that I got to walk into that my first week, so I can't take any credit or blame. <laughs> uh, Jeff, go over the parade route, um, at least the preliminary one that you're talking about now because we've changed it two and three times. Um, I guess the original route was on old timers, it would leave City Hall and it would go and turn left at, at right. uh, uh, Floyd Mayfield. And then we changed it this year and it went past it into the condos there. And then for the Christmas parade, we took it and ran it back. So just so the uh, people start, start becoming aware of what the sure. route will be. Our, our initial thought was start as we have in the past, vicinity of 73rd Library down that way because the parade's so big now that we really need three staging areas. You've got the emergency vehicles in one, um, you've got walking units, and you've got uh, the riding units. And um, Lieutenant Rue is the parade, um, is in charge of the parade, so he would be heading up that end of it, the push package, if you will. And we'll be at the park as a receiving package. Um, I think last year was the first year that they altered the route. The route used to come up Murfreesboro Road, 4170, and turn left down Floyd Mayfield, which is a great, it's, it's a great route. The problem was is that the entrance to the park was the termination point for the parade. And you've got people, you know, you've got dignitaries that want to go to the park because they've got things that they've got to do. You've got um, marching bands that are there to, parents are there to pick them up and you, you know, You've got 53 kids from the football league that are on a, on a float and their parents are there to pick them up. What we thought we would do is when they get to that point right there at Roy Walden where the stop sign is, um, you know, the political figures and people that have to be to the stage can drive their vehicles into the parking lot there and park. Um, the larger floats would continue on to Laverne Middle, the parking lot down there. Um, it's only a quarter of a mile or so past the park and that would get the big big pieces out of the mix, out of the traffic mix. And that way, if you've got all those kids from, or all those parents that are there to pick up their kids, they're, they're out of all that traffic and it just keeps them going. So, um, and then there would be an option then for smaller floats or smaller vehicles or even walking units then to turn um, to go down Roy Waldron. So we've got three different ways that the, that the float entries can, can leave the, the parade route. That's good. Now that'll, Take care of a lot of that congestion. I know you get tied up right there at the entrance to the park. There. Can we talk about uh, parking? Last year was kind of an issue. We got overbooked with the cars. We have. Um, We've had people. When I was out there helping, we had people leave because they didn't have a place to park. Well, maybe we've had talk in years past of having satellite facilities where people can park it. And I'm, you know, I throw out there, you know, different churches, different parking lots that have, you know, large, um, well, different places that have large parking lots to, to do that. But then it enters into a whole another piece then of the shuttle and all that. So, I mean, we're, we're, re we're limited as to the parking that we can have. Maybe we can talk to the school over there. The two big schools right down, maybe we can talk to 
the principals of the respective schools and see if we can't utilize that and just run a shuttle back and forth. Right. And, and I think, uh, as you know, Bob, when we spoke about it last year, mm -hmm. um, that was one of the ideas, but we weren't certain how big this was going to be. And, and sure enough, we, we found out Saturday, especially, uh, again, I don't want to know the numbers, if it was 5,000, 10,000. Uh, Turned out both, huge. But it was somewhere in the middle there. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to do something. And, you know, again, let's we'll start putting our heads together and, and, and get with the churches or, or uh, uh, schools and see if we can get some sort of shuttle system. I think that's something else we spoke of, too, um, being able to get people around the park um, somehow, some way. Um, you know, we had the entertainment in the back of the park, and it was very difficult for some people to get back there or didn't even know it was there. So, again, that was an issue, but I think that's something that we have some time to, the, the, to work the on. The thought there is we were going to look at one of those um, the longer golf carts, kind of a limousine that can seat 8 to 10 mm -hmm. and just run a continuous shuttle around the perimeter of the nice. park because we thought, too, that there was too much golf cart activity from city employees that were operating, and most of us were at that point in the shuttling um, piece of it, getting back and forth. And so if we just have that continuous rotation, be it one or two, just running that loop, it'll help the, the folks that have difficulty getting up the hill um, get to that access or get to that area of the venue. So There's something I'd like to see, and I don't know if it's even possible with all the entrances to the park. Well, we, we take these, these guesses. Well, we think there was 8,000. We think there was 6,000. I'd like to see where there's some sort of counters when people come through, if possible. I don't know if that is if, you know, we're, we're entering so many different places of the park. Um, but, but it sure would give us a, uh, an idea each year how, how many people. Uh, that was an after action comment from last year is to have a turnstile there at the main gate um, just to get a, an accurate count and have the, the fencing as such that, I mean, it's not going to be 100 percent, but you probably sure. get 95 percent solution. Um, as to who's coming in and out of your park. You don't know who your repeat visitors are, but still, right now it's just a guess. Um, and my estimation of a 1,000 could be different than Leanne's, different than Tom's. Um, so, and we did talk about having all the vendors come in um, from the back of the park. All vendor check-in and all that will be at the back of the park. Any back vendor traffic having to exit or enter the park um, will be out of the, the traffic flow for those folks that are coming to, to be, sure. you know, to look at it. Could some traffic be directed down there to park in that peewee field? And uh, If I got as many vendors as I think I'm going to have back there, I think we'll be already full up. Be but up. that'll also that'll relieve them from parking where they were last year up front and behind their their booths on the hill. Mm -hmm. um, that was a quick exactly. fix. We kind of lost control early on about vendors coming in and going and didn't take into account the curb in the parking lot and some of these folks that are carrying trailers on their cars they couldn't clear the curb and, and things of that nature so we'll have to put a little bit more thought into who we put where and how we're going to get them there um, so and that, that was the benefit of coming in last year and seeing it even though i didn't get to be part of the planning process i had a couple of ideas um, problems that arose you know we were able to identify and, and we'll work on those this year again i think that would be it would help out a lot if we had a number so we could how many parking spots do we need, basically? Right. Or, so, anything else on Old Timers Festival? All right. Well, it's something probably that will just keep coming up every workshop, every meeting. So, um, you'll certainly have your your opportunity to put your your ideas. In. So, I'm going to move on to number three, and it's kind of a another one of those those sad things that we've had here from time to time. But uh, um, Aaron Simmons um, is uh, is relocating. He's moving to, I believe, Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, he's been with the city somewhere. I want to say close. He's gosh, it's got to be ten years or, or he was more. Right at 10. Um, and uh, Aaron was always was was part of everything. Um, uh, I worked with him for again the last ten years. Jeff, you 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 worked with him on and off. I mean, again, always was there when you needed him. Um, did a great job as far as the the cutting and and, and making the actual ball fields uh, you know as green as can be and and uh, really looking looking good um, he's, he's moving on I think it today was his, his actual last, was his day. last day so thank you and, and a big goodbye and, and I'll let everyone have a comment that I know <laughs> Laura's real sad so. I know I didn't get to say goodbye um, I did work with him on several of our projects and he was fabulous he was you had a question and he had an answer and if he didn't, he would get in his little golf cart and he would go and figure right. it out. So and it didn't matter who was asking it, whether it was the public, whether it was me, you know, employee, whoever. 
I'm really going to miss him a lot. We certainly wish him well. Yeah, he's going to he's going to really be missed. Uh, he's helped me out on uh, several Boy Scout projects within the city, and he's really going to be missed. I don't know if anybody could really stand in his footsteps and Big continue uh, right off the bat. But you know, I think he's been here more than ten years, but I'm not for sure on that. But he will be missed, and we we won't see him no more. Well, I, I possibly will come back, but I. I believe he said he starts his new job April the 2nd. He's leaving that Friday before, so that'd be March the 30th, plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Said he didn't offer a little did last party Thursday. getaway or something? They did, but you and I were at work. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, that wasn't fair. No, okay, as long as the city done something, that would be, that's appropriate then. <clears throat> I didn't work with him either, but I do know that any time that someone works on our fields, the expectation is there. They've got to look great. They've got to be safe. But I think a lot of times um, the thanks doesn't always get sure. given. So mm -hmm. definitely good work there. Yeah. That's, that's tough work. Absolutely. And again, we, we sure wish him well. And uh, he may come back from time to time. He may come visit. And, so. He has a pretty nice little job, what I understand, lined up, uh, possibly working for the vice president. Is that is that the, what I'm hearing? For, VP of the United States. Huh? The VP of the United States. So. That's great. Yeah, that's, great. You know, yeah. that's kind of a jump off. Can't compete with that, Bob. Huh? Can't compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure can. A little different security yeah. All right. Well, we'll move on. Uh, we we lost one one. Uh, staff member, but uh, Jeff, I understand we have a couple more coming. We gladly picked up two. Um, we were interviewing uh, for a vacant position when Aaron turned his resignation in, and I talked to Fred Gaston, our HR director, and asked him if I couldn't go ahead and interview to fill Aaron's position at the time. Um, we got very fortunate. I had two very qualified um, individuals, uh, Nick Richardson from the library, who I feel bad that I stole that employee from Teresa, but um, I did it. And he's with the park staff, uh, effective uh, Wednesday of this week, but um, he'll actually, his first day of work will be Friday. And then John Ballard started last week as well. So I've got two uh, fresh faces, young backs, and uh, I think mm. we, I feel good where we're at in the department. Uh, we're as strong as we've ever been. I've got an offer out to uh, uh, a seasonal employee right now, um, played on the state fo championship football team for Smyrna a few years ago. So another, another strong individual, good, good representation of Laverne. Uh, I think, you know, good, solid, upstanding young man. Um, I'm very proud of. Yeah. Um, is it, are we going to? How many seasons are we just going to have one this year? Or are we going to have a couple, or do we? I have an opening for one more. Okay. Okay. For one more. And they run basically now through the end of October. October. Okay. All right. We'll move on to uh, our Easter egg hunt, which will be March 31st, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. And this year, um, make sure everyone hears this uh, change of uh, uh, venues. <laughs> I think it's probably a long time coming and maybe you have a little more room, um, but we'll move you down to Veterans Memorial Park and you're going to have it right there at the, the U-Trip fields, the first set of fields. Is that where you're doing it or are you going to do it at the field? It'll be at the, the actual egg hunt will be on the football field. The football field, okay. What we'll do is it, we'll start receiving guests at 9 a.m. at Pavilion A okay. and have some activities for the kids to participate in. Then at 10 o'clock on the football field, we'll start with uh, memory serves me the first aid group is zero four five eight nine eleven something like that and uh, we'll go through that and then when, upon completion of that those that are participating with uh, baseball these are going to kind of tie in together opening day for baseball is that day too um, somewhere in the vicinity of 11 o'clock I would guess maybe 12 o'clock depending how things go up there but um, in the past the area down here has been so congested with traffic and and whatnot. We've got ample parking up there. It only makes sense that if you're participating in the Easter egg hunt, you don't have to speed across town to get to veterans to be in time for your son or daughter to, to walk at opening ceremony. So um, 
again, Veterans Park is where it's at on, on the 31st, and that'll be an all-day affair. If I remember correctly, maybe maybe in need of some volunteers, um, maybe putting the eggs out and, and, and so on. Um, again, they can contact you or Parks and Rec or. Do fine. And just want to make sure we have a Easter bunny this year. I uh, believe so. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, and if people ask us if you want to volunteer, what time can I tell them to show up at the park? I would prefer that we have contact with them before they just show up so I have something for them to do. I hate to get volunteers to come out and me not have anything. So if they can contact us that during that week um, via email or phone or stop in either one, we'll maintain a roster. Okay. That'll give us a chance. Um, you know, typically crowd control is where you know is the the most difficult part when you've got X number of children anticipating, you know, this what we're about to do for them or to them. I'm not sure which. And we cut them loose and say, go get eggs. But traffic probably will be an, an issue as well. But I'm hoping that with signage that I can differentiate between the Easter egg hunt population and the baseball opening day population, um, just to turn off into you know the front parking lot or the back parking lot, depending on which activity you're participating with. Good deal. And you touched on our number six, but opening day for baseball and softball is the same day, March 31st. I think you said it's tentative around 11. I don't think anything's been set yet. Um, mm -mm. But uh, sure would love to, to see uh, the entire board out there as well. And, and uh, it's always always fun, especially the three and four year old rookies are first time they've had their uniforms on. <laughs> yeah, really. They're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. Some of them aren't real happy about it, but. Uh, <laughs> Most of them. Uh, it went well last oh, year. I think it did too. So, uh, guys, uh, that's it. If there, unless there's anything on any of the new business or old business you wanted to discuss. I was just going to ask how the new um, rental change is going. Have you had any rentals since the, I guess the staff person was changed to another position? We haven't enacted that yet. Um, we want to make sure the policy is complete. We're actually, we drafted a policy last week that we're reviewing tomorrow with with the administrative assistance to make sure we're in, in check. We did swap out today, though, um, the Zumba class that was at Civic Auditorium was so big, she was having 75 students in her class. And if you've been in Civic Auditorium, it's pretty tough to get 75 ex exercising people there. So we just did, before this meeting today, swapped out the Zumba is now at the multipurpose building and Jazzercise is over at Civic Auditorium. So we've started that and uh, we'll phase in the other, um, doing some, some moving around for that, for that same reason. Okay. Have we uh, had any problems up at the park as far as Mr. Lane's damage or anything? I know we've had Got some hit real hard this weekend with graffiti. Four different gang tags really? that were put up there. Um, the police uh, went and looked at them. On and, what yeah. building? Veterans Park throughout the baseball complex, the, the the first floor, the grass infield area got hit really hard. A couple of the uh, the uh, those little out boxes that are, control the irrigation and lighting, um, some electrical stuff, and and it's spring break, so I imagine we'll have more of the same. It's going to be a rough week for us. It typically is. Weather's nice. When it's weather's nice and it's spring break and the kids are looking for things to do and. You know, and veterans is where we do it. Chief Walker has been great with his crew, is stepping it up and, and uh, just a presence in the park. Um, Perhaps next year we can come up with something for kids to do at the park for spring break. We thought about that. Mm -hmm. Any possibility of a ranger that we've talked about several years that we haven't gotten yet in the budget? I don't think there's money. That's that's a bigger question than me. I, I don't foresee any new hires coming into Parks and Recreation this this year. But that would I'll answer it in this way. I think the city throughout needs more police officers. Um, uh, I, I do think uh, uh, Chief Walker has uh, sent uh, uh, made a priority to to be in the park more. Um, uh, again, as far as just a park ranger for the park, while I think it's a great idea, again, we 
the city has many needs and, and uh, I would say a police officer or, or more police officers for the entire city would probably be a bigger need at this point in time. And again, that's just one, one vote, but uh, uh, down the road I'd love to see some, someone in there full time. Right. Um, again, if nothing else, just to, just to uh, be a presence. I, I don't disagree with the thought at all. Okay. Just something that uh, we've been working on for sure. quite a few years and hasn't happened yet. What about our siren system? Is that we still get in the back burner? Or? Well, right now we've put the, uh, uh, the <coughs> si actual sirens are, um, I would say they're at, at very least on the back burner. Uh, we do have a code red system and we are looking into a lightning detection system for the actual park. Um, it's my thinking that the code red system is the best or the most efficient way to warn our citizens of right. uh, many things, whether it be uh, inclement weather, um, hazmat issues, uh, flooding, you name it. Um, you, you opt into it, they can, they can text you, they can call you at your home phone, at your work phone, um, just so many different ways, email you. Uh, you don't have to necessarily be at your house. You could be, uh, if you have a family member here and you're in Nashville, they're going to contact you there. There's so many pluses to it. Um, that actually we voted it in for a roughly about a three or four month trial starting probably this week is what I understand. They're going to come in and start trying to set up and that'll run through the end of the fiscal year. And from that point on, we'll, we'll make the determination uh, where, what we want to do at that point in time. We actually got it at a, if you remember the siren system was 600,000 plus. Right. We've got this as basically a trial for the rest of the fiscal year for 6,000. So big savings. And, and again, I think uh, residents are going to be very pleased with what they're, what they're getting there. Uh, Jeff, if you have anything else uh, that you want to speak on in Code Red at all? But... Not right now. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, and I, I guess we did some of our comments, but we'll move on. We'll do that in a minute. But uh, I just ever let everyone know our next workshop is April 16th. Um, six o'clock right here um again will be a workshop we'll televise again jeff in in, in may i think mm -hmm. is that how it's i know we had to make some adjustments um, and from there we'll move on again to comments and uh leanne we'll start with you if there's anything if there's not that's I'm fine i'm looking forward to the easter hunt it's, my, <laughs> it's, my, it's a lot of fun hope it's yeah. a little warmer than last year hope it's like it is now uh, not right now. i think uh, Yeah, we haven't had much of a winter, so uh, there's going to be a lot of insects and all that stuff out in the fields and mosquitoes and everything else, I imagine. Uh, this is the last day of winter, 80-some degrees. We'll take it. I'm not going to complain yeah, at all. But this is not good for tornado weather, and I that's what I'm concerned about. Absolutely. Um, we don't need one here. I think there was one here, what? 50 years ago, 35 years ago. We actually had the EF1 that, that touched down across the 24 last year. Last year, yeah, but that, that wasn't as big as the one that no, no. came down several years ago. And just pray that it doesn't happen. You know, Bob, the one thing that I want to say, a lot of people don't understand or, or don't, uh, everyone thinks of Tornado Alley, Texas, Oklahoma, right. Kansas, so yeah. on. Um, I saw a stat the other day that Tennessee Valley has the most tornadoes throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. So uh, unfortunately, yeah, we, we need to be prepared um, because it's, it's, they're, they're not going away. So yeah. yes, sir, I yeah. understand. One hit up there in the Dexter, Michigan. Never had nothing up there. So they're, they're popping up all over the country. You know? Everybody needs to be prepared. Sure. Ms. Laura? Well, I'm just waiting for one of these days when the adults get an Easter egg hunt. Thoughts? Yeah, <laughs> Good job. I'm not ready to throw it out there I know yet, I wouldn't get to participate, but I could send my husband. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm really excited. It looks like um, we're going to have a busy year this year. A lot of stuff going on. So maybe we can get um, just as many volunteers as we did for the cleanup to come out and help with these events so you get to be there, enjoy it, and help. That'd be nice. Well, uh, Jeff, do you, you all have anything you want to add? Oh. I don't think so. He, this is the first time Julie's been on okay. the 
television, so, so everybody watching at home, this is our Hello, Julie. afternoon administrative assistant. Julie, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, last thing I want to say again is, is uh, just again to our volunteers. Uh, they seem to be growing and just everything we ask, anytime we ha when you have a need for them, whether it be a, a tornado uh, or bad weather or a cleanup or old timers festival, they are there. So I just want to thank everyone. Uh, and please, if you have a, a group or an organization that would uh, like to uh, be part, uh, take part in, partner with the city, please contact myself or Parks and Rec. Um, other than that, again, special thanks to, to Aaron. Um, again, we wish him well, and, and uh, thank you to Parks and Rec. Great job that y'all are doing. How are your new mowers working? Have you got them up and running? Behind. Now, did you name them or are you going to put them out there to be named? We're still debating. Okay, okay. I think a good deal. Lightning, think, it? Yeah, I think the thunder and lightning is basically in the lead right now. Okay, well, that's, that's the start, I guess. So. <laughs> Other than that, uh, guys, we'll just adjourn. Thank you very much. See you next month.